Hello and welcome to this tutorial on crossover cables. We'll be exploring crossover cables and comparing them to straight through cables. Uh, we use these to connect network devices all the time. So it's important to understand why you need a crossover cable. And likewise, it's really good to know what devices require a crossover cable when they are connected sometimes a straight through cable and sometimes a crossover cable. And finally we'll take a look at how exactly a crossover cable is made. What do the pinouts look like? If you haven't yet checked out the UTP tutorial, please have a please take a moment to do that. We cover all of the basics in UTP there and we'll be relying on that foundation knowledge here in this tutorial. So let's get started and take a look at the straight through cable. Okay, here we have a PC and it's connected to a switch. And we are representing the UTP cable that connects them in between and we're noting the pinouts on the RJ45 connectors on both sides. So this is a straight through cable and that means that the pinouts match. Pin one equals pin one on the other side. Pin two on one end is connected to pin two on the other side. So on and so forth for all eight wires. Now we're only showing four wires here because you'll recall 10 base and 100 base T only require two pairs to transmit and receive. 1000 base T requires four pairs, all eight wires. So just keep that difference in mind. We'll be focusing on 10 and 100 base T in this tutorial. So why does this work? Well, pair three, which is pins one and two, the green ones, are used by a PC's NIC to send frames. And that works out well because the switch is set up to receive frames on that same pair. So the PC sends, the switch receives. It, it really works out well, very simple. Likewise, in the other direction, the switch uses pins three and six, the orange ones, which is pair two, to send frames to the PC. Likewise, the PC is expecting to receive on that same pair. So you can see one end is sending, the other end is receiving, and they're using the same pair to do that. And that's why it works out really well. Pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at some of the devices because we know that a PC and a switch are a little bit different in terms of the pairs they use and what they use them for. Let's take a look at some of the other devices to get a better understanding. These are the devices we're most commonly going to run into on local area networks. On the left hand side we have a router and a PC. And those devices are the same in terms of which pairs they use to send and receive. A router and a PC both use pair 3, pins 1 and 2, to send, and pair 2, pins 3 and 6, to receive. Now the exact opposite of those two devices are on the right-hand side of the diagram, and on the top you have a hub, and on the bottom you have a switch. Those send on pair two, pins three and six, and receive on pair three, pins one and two. Well, what does this mean? Well, if you're gonna connect any device on the left to any device on the right, you use a straight through cable. And likewise, any device on the right to the left, you use a straight through cable, because as we just noted, the pinouts match, I send, you receive, and we use the same pair to do that. Well, what happens when we connect two devices on the same side? So for instance, two switches, we need to connect them. And this is a very common thing because in local area networks, you oftentimes have many switches because you have many users, many things to put online. So let's take a look at what happens in this scenario. We have two switches here and we have a straight through cable between them. Well, we know that a switch uses pair two, pins three and six, to send. Great, so on the left hand side, this switch sources a frame on pair two, and it sends it over to the other switch. And that's the problem. The switch on the right hand side also uses pair two, pins three and six, to send. It's not expecting to receive, but on the left hand side, we just sourced the frame and sent it out on the right hand side we're expecting to receive that frame on pair three pins one and two so because they use the same pairs to both send and receive these two devices these two switches cannot communicate 
because they're using a straight through cable. The pins are not matching properly so they can speak to each other. And that's the problem. Well, how do we fix this problem? Well, you guessed it, we need a crossover cable. So let's take a look at how that differs. Okay, here we have our two switches and this time we have a crossover cable between them. And you'll notice immediately that the pinouts have changed. Instead of one to one, two to two, three to three, so on and so forth, they've changed. And what we've done is we moved pin one, instead of connecting to pin one on the other side, it now connects to pin three. Likewise, pin two is no longer connecting to pin two on the other side, it connects to pin six. And we do this for both of the pairs. So pin one to pin three, pin two to pin six. And that is a crossover cable. So how does this solve the problem? Well, on the left-hand side, our switch is going to source a frame again, and it does so on pair two, pins three and six, sends it on its way. And this time, instead of going to the send pair on the right-hand side, it is being connected to the receive pair on the right-hand side. Pair three, pins one and two. So the same holds true going in the other direction. On the right-hand side, we source a frame on pair two, and that frame travels and it is received on the receive pair on the switch on the left hand side. And so now both of the two switches can talk to each other. They can send and receive frames and they are sent and delivered on the proper pairs, the proper pinouts. And that is how a crossover cable allows like devices to connect. So a switch to a switch, a PC to a PC, a router to a router, Crossover cables enable these devices, their pinouts, to send and receive properly. A quick note about Gigabit Ethernet. The same thing holds true for these two pairs, but you'll remember Gigabit Ethernet uses all four pairs, so the other two pairs, pair one and pair four, those also need to be switched just like we did here, and that would enable a Gigabit-enabled interface to uh, properly connect to another like device. Also, you should be aware of a Cisco feature called Auto MDIX. And this is a feature which allows a switch to adjust itself for the correct pinouts. You may have come across this. Perhaps you've used a straight through cable, cable to connect to switches and it worked. You didn't have to do anything and maybe you scratched your head and said, I don't understand why that worked. Well, this feature could be enabled and we won't get too deeply into it, but just so you know, it does exist. Um, but don't let that replace your knowledge and understanding of what a cross through cable is, crossover cable is, and what it's used for, because this knowledge is required, especially if you're going to be pursuing the CCENT and CCNA. Also, on the job experience, it's, it's mandatory to understand when you need to use a crossover cable and when to use a straight through cable. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and take a quick summary of what we've covered. Okay, so we covered straight through cables and we know that the pinouts are the same at both ends of the straight through cable. One to one, two to two, three to three, all the way through. And we also talked a bit about the different devices. PCs and routers handle receiving and sending the pinouts in the same way. Hubs and switches perform differently than PCs and routers in terms of the pins they use to send and receive frames. So if you keep those two groups in mind, you'll always know when to use a straight through and when to use a crossover cable. So crossover cables connecting like devices, straight through cable connecting different devices. So keep those categories in mind. And finally, the details of the crossover cable, it all comes down to the pinouts. Pair two, which is pins three and six and pair three pins one and two we need to switch them up so instead of one to one one goes to three and two goes to six and there you have it now you know everything about crossover cables thanks for watching